Uh, welcome to an Elul teaching, which I call Nestled in Hashem's Loving Embrace. The month of Elul is the last month of the Jewish year. It's a time for us not only to reflect on the dynamics of influence from the previous year, but a time to recharge our spiritual batteries so we can enter the new year full of vigor and light. The letters of Elul are encrypted in many places in the Torah, most notably in the line from Shir HaSharim, I am for my beloved and my beloved is for me. But there's many other places where you can find a pasuk uh, where each word starts with one of the letters of Elul. The fact that no other month of the year is encrypted like this in Torah sends us an important message. The month is telling us to reflect and focus more closely on the Torah, to dig really deep. And the Torah is our lives, so to dig deep into our lives. And since Elul is this month of reflection, uh, take a moment right now to either think or even write down a word or a sentence or a phrase that sums up some aspect of your life that needs attention. If you if you want, just you know, focus a little bit, and you can do this later also. Perhaps it's a bad habit you'd like to get rid of, a relationship with someone, an attitude that needs repair. Perhaps there's a trait you'd like to cultivate: creativity, compassion, tolerance. It could be a specific situation you need help with. Whatever it is, take note of it. My blessing for you is that you're able to apply this teaching to your specific goal or concern. Within the word Elul, spelled Aleph Lamed, Bab Lamed, is the word Lul, which means nest. We know that Aleph stands for God, Elohim, Adonai, and in this way, we can imagine a loving presence, a bird perhaps, that hovers above us while we are curled up safely in the nest. Karen, could you put up my graphic? Okay, and I have lost my text. This happens each time. Okay, all right. So that's what I'm wearing on my ears. And this is from my deck, Letters from Heaven. And it's the illustration for uh, the letter Samach, which means support. And I, years ago, thought of this image of a nest and us being an, inside that nest. And then to discover that within the word Elul is the word nest. So it all kind of comes around unexpectedly. It's traditional during the month of Elul to visualize and embody the four letter name of God, yud Hey vav Hey. In your mind's eye, go to your happy place. During the month of Elul, God is in the field. During the year, the Holy One lives in a palace, inviting dignitaries into the divine kingdom. But during Elul, God goes out into the field and waits for all of us in the field. And God is saying, no, all year long, you don't call, you don't write. I miss you, booby. Come to me, tell me how you are, what you've been going through, what's gone well, what could have gone better. What do you need? I'm here for you. Tell me, I'm happy to help you. If we want to see the divine who wears that smiling countenance of welcome, we need to initiate by leaving our house. And that house is the experiences from the past year. So we have to leave it behind. According to the Sefer Yitzira, each month of the year corresponds to an astrological sign, a letter of the Tetragrammaton, one of the five senses, a tribe, a body part, and a sphera or essence of the divine. I'll just cover a few today. So speaking of earth, the astrological sign associated with Elul is Virgo, the Betula or the Virgin. 
one who is open and pure on a spiritual level. A bitula is a pure soul, completely connected to godliness. It also represents teshuva, a return to God, when we fix the mistakes of the past year. And Virgo is an earth sign. And here we're talking about uh, appreciating nature. Virgo represents the divine power of the feminine. Virgo is an earth sign and indicates potentiality since everything comes from the earth. The earth gives more than we give to it. And what happens in the earth, it's really a, mir a miracle. I mean, we see nature, but how does it all happen? All these things are happening at once. It's, it really can blow your mind if you think about it. We plant ourselves in the earth to discover what will grow in the next year. After all, within the word earth, Adama in Hebrew is the word for person, Adam. The sense of Elul is touch. We can appreciate the differences of nature through our sense of touch, the way the air feels on our skin, the comfort of feeling connected to the earth when standing barefoot on the grass, the delicate silky texture of a flower petal, the refreshing feeling of cool water when we jump into a lake. The tribe of the month is Gad, Gimeldal. When Gad was born in Bereshi, chapter 30, verse 11, Leah said, luck has come. It means good luck and unexpected good things. A new light that never was will come into the world in the new year and it will affect all of creation. What is God's desire for you? The inner work we do in Elul will affect the energy of the next year. The sphera of the month is Malchut. Malchut receives the energy from the sphero above it. Similarly, in the dark of night, the sun no longer shines. The moon, which is associated with Mahu, though it has no light of its own, reflects the light of the sun to illuminate the night. Mahu puts what it receives out into the world. Since Elul is about action, putting it into the world is an important process. The more effort we put into clearing out our inner schmutz, the more positive, loving, focused energy we will have to go into the new year. Kadima! Divarti, thank you.